Russians lost 300 units of equipment during the capture of one Ukrainian city. While the Ukrainian armed forces were repelling the occupiers' offensive on Avdiivka, another part of the Russians launched a smaller scale but no less costly attack on Novomykhailovka. As Forbes writes, around the same time that the occupiers captured what was left of Avdiivka in mid-April, they also occupied Novomykhailovka. The first battle cost them more, but only in its pure form, and in terms of the scale of the battle, the six-month battle for Novomykhailovka was just as bloody. It is quite possible that during the capture of Avdiivka, the Russian Federation lost more than 40,000 servicemen, a third killed, two-thirds wounded, plus more than 1,000 units of equipment. Meanwhile, in the Novomykhailovka area, the Ukrainian armed forces wrote off more than 300 enemy vehicles. This means that the occupation forces' losses amount to about 13,000 killed and wounded. The Ukrainian losses in both battles were much smaller, the publication noted. Journalists noted that late last year, seven Russian regiments and brigades, including the ill-fated 155th Marine Brigade, attacked the Ukrainian garrison at Novomykhailivka, which consisted of two active brigades. The fighting was merciless. The occupiers lost tanks, including T-54s from the 1950s, T-62s from the 1960s and newer T-72s and T-80s. Ukrainian mines, artillery and drones knocked out dozens of tanks, but the Russians continued to advance. As in the battle for Avdiivka, the occupiers ran out of specialized armored vehicles and used many homemade ones as replacements. The heavy losses that the Ukrainian armed forces inflicted on the Russians stopped but did not prevent the occupation of Novomykhailovka in mid-April of this year. As in Avdiivka, the Ukrainian forces defending Novomykhailivka were sorely short of artillery shells and anti-tank missiles, largely due to the long absence of US aid, which was blocked by Russia-friendly Republican lawmakers. That blockade finally ended when Russian troops entered Novomykhailivka, the newspaper stated. At the cost of 320 vehicles and thousands of troops, the Russians advanced six kilometers in depth and through Novomykhailovka in six months. Whether the ruins of the city are worth the price that Russia paid is a question that only the Russians can answer. The journalists concluded. Ukrainian army learned to destroy Russians' turtle tanks. FPV drones are used for this purpose. This spring, the Russian occupation army developed a new type of vehicle, a turtle tank, to defend itself against Ukrainian FPV drones. However, the defense forces quickly realized and learned to destroy even such enemy equipment with welded-on defense antennas, Forbes reports. As soon as the turtle tanks began crawling along the 1,160 km in April, the Ukrainians began to come up with ways to destroy them, the article says. The publication cited the example of the 108th Troops Brigade, which still managed to find a way to destroy such Russian tanks. For example, a group of drones from the Sky Force Brigade recently spotted a turtle tank along the front line in southern Ukraine and aimed at least two of their FPVs at it. Forbes noted that the first drone hit the metal flank of the enemy tank. Shortly before it, a second drone approached and made a targeted strike in the same direction. The strikes caused a fire that engulfed the entire tank. The Russian occupiers are firmly convinced that if a protective structure like a barbecue is welded on top of a tank, it will provide guaranteed protection from drones. But the Skyforce group operators proved that this is not the case at all, the military said. The article noted that this method makes sense since many of the best anti-tank missiles have tandem warheads with two charges. Accordingly, the first charge punches a hole in the tank's armor. The second charge explodes inside the tank to inflict maximum damage. Skyforce's dual kill method for turtle tanks turns a pair of FPVs into a de facto tandem warhead. One drone to punch a hole in the outer armor. The second drone will strike under the broken shell, the publication concluded. As previously reported, Ukrainian military personnel inspected the turtle tank and called it blind, stupid and noisy. The driver has almost no visibility. The tank's turret is fixed in place. There is no ammunition and the main gun does not even fire, said Ukrainian Lieutenant Colonel Sergei Misiura. Recently, Ukrainian armed forces captured a turtle tank for the first time and its crew was captured. It is known that this was done by fighters from the 22nd Separate Mechanized Brigade. 